Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Ted Carr, and I don't know why you're watching this video right now. I don't know why you watch my channel. I really don't know. But I do know why I make these videos. I make these videos as often as I can because it feels so good to share what's real for me. It feels so good to, to have an insight or to have a thought and then to relay it out to you guys and hopefully it's well received by you guys. Uh, but even if it's not well received, which is rare because I think we're kind of on the same page here for the most part, um, it's okay because at least I got to get something off my chest. I got to get something off my chest. And sometimes I make a video just to get something off my chest and then a few weeks later, or a month later, or a year later, a decade later, I, I remove the video because I think that's no longer real for me. Um, so everything you see on my channel right now is, is real for me. If it wasn't, I would probably take it down. But it, just, it feels so good to make these videos for you guys. And I'm really glad that, like I said, for the most part, they're well received. But I don't know why you're watching these videos. I don't know what you're trying to get out of these videos. Maybe you're just wanting someone to, to hang out with digitally, virtually. Um, but it doesn't really matter why you're watching them because like I said, I make these videos for me. I make them to get stuff off my chest. And I think it feels really good to at least think that I'm helping other people by making these videos. I get lots of comments, messages, emails, Snapchats, DMs from people saying, latest video is great, thank you so much, blah, 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 blah. And those messages are amazing. Those messages feel really, really good. But I don't make the videos for those messages. If I wasn't getting any of those messages, I'd still make the videos because these videos have now become a way for me to express. And I think if you're not expressing in life, then you're suppressing. Suppression turns to depression, and depression turns to disease, and disease can turn into disintegration. And I don't want to go down that path. So instead I focus on expression, getting out, creating. And I think a lot of today's misery, a lot of today's suffering comes about from a lack of creating. People's lack of creating. As little kids, we love to create. We love to make sandcastles. We love to play with our Lego. We love to play with our Barbies. We love to play with, um, just tag with one another, um, or whatever we play, cops and robbers, or hide and go seek. We love to play, we love to create. And we don't care what anyone thinks, really, until a certain age. Like, we will draw and we'll scribble and we'll make messes. We'll just create for the sake of creating. Make noises, we'll bang things on, bang pots and pans. And it's only a, until a certain age that we do that just for, totally for ourselves. And then we get to a point where we're like, oh, maybe like I can seek approval, maybe I can get approval for doing this. Maybe like, maybe other people would like me more if I do this or whatever. But that's like a conscious, a conscious activity going on there, seeking other people's approval. But in our heart, we know that we're still, we're making that music, we're making these videos, we're, we're creating our art because it feels good feels good and the moment it stops feeling good is the moment we start contemplating why am I even doing this why am I even doing this anymore am I gonna keep doing this if it doesn't feel good and if <laughs> if it doesn't feel good man you're probably just not gonna do it so it's very important in life to do things because you feel good doing them you feel good while you do them not to do things because they make you feel good. Nothing can make you feel good. Nothing makes you feel good. But you can probably get in a really good state of mind by doing the things that you really enjoy doing. So it's like when you go to bed at night and you close your eyes, the nighttime comes, the sheets come over your body. That doesn't make you go to bed. That doesn't make you fall asleep. And you can't even make yourself fall asleep. You have to let yourself fall asleep. So it's not a matter of effort falling asleep. And just the same goes for feeling good. You don't have to put effort into feeling good. Feeling good comes when you release the effort. Feeling good, feeling good is always there. Feeling good is our natural state. Feeling good is our true state. Feeling good is our true essence. And if we just let ourselves feel good, we will feel good. Feeling good is always there. We just need to let it happen. We need to let it. Let our body, let our minds feel good. Allow for the good feeling to 
where we lit up. It's always there. It's like a blue sky, you know? You look up at the sky, and oftentimes you might see some clouds and you can't see the blue sky. But you know if you took a plane or a rocket, or you jumped really, really high through the clouds, there'd be blue sky above the clouds. There's always a blue sky. And people say, oh, the sun's not out. The sun's always out. It's just maybe behind the clouds. So the sun is always there. It's always sunny. It's always sunny. Not just in Philadelphia. It's always sunny everywhere. It's just maybe the clouds are up. So if you're feeling really frustrated, you're feeling really angry, you're feeling really down, you're feeling depressed, you're feeling upset, you're feeling stagnant, you're feeling stuck, just know that that's because you're not allowing. You're not allowing. You haven't been allowing, at least up, up until that point, up until this point. So being aware of this, you realize, wow, there's nothing I need to do to really put effort into, to, to like really like try to make myself happy or whatever. I just need to allow myself to feel happy. And there are a few things that you can do to allow yourself to feel happy. One of those things is to create, express, self-expression, creative expression, however you like to express. But like I said, if you're not expressing, then you're suppressing. And suppression, suppression turns to depression. Every time you suppress something, depressing it, it's gonna turn to a dis-ease. And you wanna be at ease. If you wanna be at ease, you gotta express. Express yourself before you wreck yourself. And there are various ways to express yourself. You can make Snapchats, you can make Instagram captions, you can write a blog, you can uh, talk with a friend on the phone, make videos, sing, dance, scream into a pillow, um, jump underwater and scream as loud as you can underwater, or just go for a run, express yourself physically. Just do something that you usually feel good doing. But sitting back and passively watching TV, sitting back and scrolling through Facebook and Instagram, sitting back and just watching a bunch of lame ass trending videos on YouTube, that's not gonna do it for you. That's not gonna do it for you. If you're gonna consume any sort of content, make sure it's content that gets you focused on where you want to go. Make sure it's content that allows you to, to remi that reminds you of, of where you wanna go in life. It's important to have the right sort of input in life. But I think input is way overrated. Like, it's just like with nutrition. People say like, here, eat this apple, this apple, and, and this orange are gonna make you the healthiest person on the planet. It's like, it's the food that's gonna make you healthy. Here, eat, eat, eat. Or if people aren't focusing on the fruit, then like, here, this supplement will make you feel the best. This supplement will be antidepressant or whatever. But the healthiest thing to eat is nothing. The healthiest thing to eat is, is air. It's like, if you're constantly, if, if food really was the healthiest thing to eat, then, then you should be eating all the time. But you don't need to be eating all the time. The healthiest thing, the, the, when, you, when you feel you're healthiest, it's when you haven't eaten in a while. It's when you've, it's when you've I mean, just woken up and you're fresh in the morning. Or it's when you've just gone for this big, big, long hike, and maybe like over the course of like a seven-hour hike, you only had like a couple hundred calories. So you really haven't eaten that much. So it's 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 the lack of eating that allows you to feel your best, to feel your healthiest. So when people want to increase their health the fastest, they go on a fast, either a water fast or a juice fast or something. But they just begin to allow the body to get healthy. So health is our natural state. We come out of the womb. For most people, we're extremely healthy right off the bat. The healthiest humans are typically babies. They're pure and they're unadulterated, they're just pure health. And they haven't eaten food with their mouth and esophagus and whatnot yet. They're just healthy. And when you want to return to your healthiest state, you typically eat less. When you're really, really sick, right? When you're really, really ill, you're like, oh, I'm so sick, I have a headache, and I'm nauseous, and I'm just gonna go lay down on the bed. When you go lay down on the bed for a couple hours, you get up, you're like, oh, I actually feel quite better. I'm glad I got to lay down. Well, when you were laying down, you weren't eating anything. You were just resting. You are just resting. And same with when you got like really sore muscles or something, your muscles are really sore, let's say you've injured your shoulder, and then, you go to sleep one night and you wake up, you're like, oh, my shoulder's actually much better. Like, all I needed was a good night's sleep. Well, during sleep, you didn't eat anything. You didn't even do anything. You just rested. You allowed the body to heal. So it's back to allowing. 
think we were talking about. Just allow. There are some other things that you can do to allow yourself to feel really, really good. And those would be things like I was saying, like going for a big hike, just being out outside. Um, going for a run, going for a walk. Swimming, biking, whatever. Going to the gym, using your body physically. Uh, and just meditating even. Just sitting and being, just blocking out all input. Have nothing coming in through your eyes, nothing really coming in through your ears, nothing coming in through your mouth, or nothing really coming in through your nose besides some oxygen, some shallow breaths. Unless you're doing breath work, that's another thing that you can do that will allow you to feel really, really good. Uh, and you're only gonna really do the things that allow you to feel good if you start creating associations of pleasure with them. I think a lot of people, they have the wrong associations with the right things. So people associate meditation with being like really like hippie woo woo spiritual BS. Or associating it with like being bored. Or associating it with not having enough time to meditate. Whatever it is, you know? But until you begin to associate meditation with just sheer pleasure and sheer bliss and something that you really look forward to, you're never really going to do it. So keep that in mind. If you're not meditating now, it's because you don't have the association of extreme pleasure with it. Um, same goes for doing breath work. You know, if you associate breath work with being like really exhausting, like <laughs> then you might not do it. But if you associate breath work with being really exhilarating, and really energizing, and really alkalizing, then you're probably gonna want to do it. And it helps to have mentors in every area of life that you want to improve. So if you want to improve your meditation, find a meditation mentor. If you want to improve your breath work, find a breath work mentor. If you want to improve your fitness, find a fitness mentor. If you want to, if you want to uh, spend more time creating content online, you'd find a creator mentor, uh, whatever it is. If you want to f be more grateful in life, find someone who's, who's, you know, whose job it is or whose message it is to, you know, promote positivity and promote gratitude and, and appreciation. Uh, have, have mentors in all areas of life. Because we grew up from ages, let's say, zero to 10 or 12 around our parents all the time. And we become very much like our parents during that time. And then afterwards, we hang out with some other people, some other people's parents or whatever. And then we just, we become like our friends. So we become the people we hang around. So it's very important that if the people you're hanging around right now are not inspirational for you, are not uplifting for you, are not motivating you, are not setting like really good examples for you. If you can't find those people in real life, in your immediate surroundings right now, seek them out online. There are many people online. There are many people online. And like I was saying earlier, it's important not to just sit back and passively consume content, like just see what all your friends are doing on Facebook and see what the price of Bitcoin is doing or see what is happening in the Middle East or whatever, just passively consuming shit. Instead, know what you want to create, know what you want to start producing in the world. And then if you are going to consume any content whatsoever, make sure it's specific, make sure it's actually inspirational. If you're going to watch any YouTube videos, make sure it's the type of content that's really going to make you want to put pen to paper and start brainstorming. Make sure it's the type of content that's going to make you want to watch another really inspirational video or go out, better yet, go out and take action. Go out and take some action. On the YouTube algorithms, I had a, I had a meeting with the, with like the, the YouTube creator community and um, they assigned me like a YouTube creator mentor to get on a Skype call with a few months ago. And I was like, so what, what's like, what are some things that most people don't know about YouTube videos and how to like to make your videos get more views and stuff? Not my videos don't get many views, so I'm like, oh, maybe I can like use a little hack or something to get more views on the videos naturally. And he's like, well, you know, if at the end of your video, your, your viewers go on to like watch many other videos after that, then your video is going to show up higher in the uh, recommended for other people to watch. He's like, you, your video has to have stickability. It's got to it's gotta get people to like watch a bunch of other videos as well. So we recommended putting my videos in playlists so people can watch this video and then watch another one, watch another one, another one. So you do benefits off people just watching one video to the next, the next, the next, the next. So he said the worst thing you could do is recommend your viewers to like after they watch your video go out for a run or go for a walk or go and stop YouTube and go and take some action. But that is what I would love you to do. That's what I would that's what I would do as well. Like if I if I watch a video on YouTube and I don't feel like 
Okay, I need to shut this video off right now. I need to go take some action. That's the wrong type of video. If it's the video that makes you like, oh, that was a good video, I'm gonna watch another one, another one, another one. Those videos are the worst type for you to be watching. If, 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 if your goal is to be as happy and as productive and as uh, fulfilled as possible. So keep that in mind. After this video, go do something else. You've already been watching it for 15 minutes. Um, yeah. Alright guys, I really have no idea what this video is going to be about. I just wanted to express myself here. And remind you guys that meditation is always there for you. Feeling good is always there for you. Breath work is always there for you. And there are things that you can do that will guarantee, that will guarantee that you feel good. That will guarantee that you allow yourself to feel good. You know, having a hot cold shower, hot cold, hot cold, hot cold, hot cold. It's gonna guarantee that you just start allowing yourself to feel really, really good. I laugh, I smile every single time I have a hot, cold shower. Go back and forth, back and forth. And I never suffer in a cold shower. That's the thing about cold showers. People think you have to suffer. It's not suffering. When the cold comes, it's a relief. Because the hot was too hot. And you get to a point where you're like, oh, fuck, I don't even want any hot anymore. At the end of the shower, you just have pure cold. And you're like, oh, the relief of the pure cold is so good. So if you're suffering in a cold shower, you're doing it wrong. Especially if you're new to it. Perhaps if you're been doing cold showers, hot, cold, hot, cold for many years, then you can just walk right into it and do a cold and enjoy that. But if you're new to it, start hot, start really hot and get to the point where you're so hot that you need a little bit of cold to just find that relief. The hot, cold, hot, cold should be a relief thing. And then when you go back to the, the hot water after the cold, it's like, oh, it's a relief, it's kind of warm. But what you'll find is that the, the going back to warm, as, as nice as it, as it is, it's like, oh, nice and comforting. It's not as exhilarating, it's not as pleasurable as the cold. The cold is always much more pleasurable. So just know that that's always an option as well. Before we hold our breath, let's get in some oxygen, let's supercharge ourselves. So we're just gonna inhale a lot and just let the breath go. So like So we're not putting any emphasis, any effort on the exhale. It's just purely effort and focus on the inhale. So we'll just do that for like 10 seconds here. Here we go. Supercharge yourself. Now let's just take a couple big inhalations and see how that feels. Just really stretch our lungs here. We're gonna stretch our lungs. Here we go. And one more. Just inhale, hold it for a second or two, and then exhale. All right. And this one we're gonna inhale and hold for a minute. But before we inhale, exhale everything. Now inhale. And hold this.
Joe Gus. Hope you uh, were able to succeed in that. If you didn't succeed, if you didn't make it to a full minute, it's okay. Just know that maybe you can set that as a goal. All right, set that as a goal. And that's another thing I wanna quickly mention here before the video ends. Have goals, know where you're going in life. Know where you're going in life. The difference between people who have very quote unquote successful lives and get what they want in life and keep getting what they want in life and have all these amazing things happening to them. They're the people who know what they want. They might not know how to get it. They probably don't know how to get it. In fact, the reason we want things in life typically is because they're kind of mysterious. They're kind of like, they're, they're almost, they're out of reach for us right now. We want the things we can't have. Humans want things they can't have. So if you know you really want something, you probably don't know how to get it. And that's part and parcel. The things you want are also the things you don't know how to get. If you know how to get something, then you might not really, really want it. So keep that in mind. But anyways, once you know what you want, remind yourself of it on a daily basis. It's way too easy to get caught up in the things that we don't want. It's way too easy to get caught up in the fact that, oh, we don't want to go to work, or oh, we don't want to be in this argument, or oh, we don't want to be living here, or, oh, we don't want this uh, uh, mess in our house or whatever it is. It's easy to get caught up in the things that we don't want. And what's easy to do is also easy not to do. And something that's really easy to do, but also easy not to do, is to remind ourselves of the things that we want. It's to remind ourselves of our ideals. I asked a good friend yesterday, she was having a hard time emotionally, and I asked her, I was like, have you ever brainstormed like your ideals in life? Because we were talking about her energy level, and I was like, the triggering mechanism behind the release of great amounts of energy is a great desire. Desire is the triggering mechanism for the release of energy. If you have strong desire, you've got a lot of energy. And she's like, yeah, I mean, like, I don't really have a lot of energy right now, and I think it's because I don't have any desires in life. And that's totally normal. It's totally fine, too. If you don't desire anything, then it's fine not to have energy, because what, what do you need the energy for? You're not seeking out anything. You're not trying to, you know, do much with it. But once you know what you want, you have a strong desire, you're gonna have more energy throughout the day as well. All right? So whatever you want in life, take your phone out, write a note, write, bunch of notes on your phone of the things that you want and then just remind yourself of them on a daily basis read them read this list of the things you want first thing in the morning and last thing at night and then immediately after you read the list either sit and meditate for five or ten minutes to get yourself in a really beautiful state of mind or just start thanking thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thanking everything around you thanking your life just get yourself in a state of strong appreciation and when you start appreciating the things that you have now the things that you want in the future are going to come to you so much faster. Appreciation creates this magnetic effect in your life. Okay, now I'm officially done the video. Thanks so much, guys. Know what you want and just appreciate the things you have now. And do your best to keep yourself in a really positive, uplifted, motivational state. Motivated state. And be okay with, if you're ever down and out, if you're ever feeling crummy, be okay with that. Learn from that. Take notes. With every setback, with every setback, there lies a seed of equal or greater equivalent. So if you're ever set back in life, if you're ever down and out, just realize you're, you're like, it's like a slingshot. You're just being pulled back a bit. But if you learn from that, you let go, take off, all right? Peace out, much love. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in another video.